Hey everyone, and welcome back to On The Spot STEM. Today, we're going to be doing problem number 23 of the 2020 AMC 12B. The problem asks us to find the number of integers n greater than or equal to 2, such that whenever there are n complex numbers, such that all the complex numbers have magnitude of 1, and the sum of all of them is equal to 0, then those numbers are equally spaced out on the unit circle in the complex plane. Now whenever you see that the magnitudes are all equal to 1, you know that all the complex numbers fall on the unit circle centered at the origin. So let's draw that unit circle real quick. Now the best way to attack this problem from here is actually to try values of n. So when n equals 2, if we take any Joe z1, since z2 has to be on the circle and the sum of z1 plus z2 is equal to 0, that means that z2 is on the opposite side of the circle as z1. And since it's on the opposite side, it's equally spaced out on the unit circle. So basically for z1, z2 is uniquely defined. So n equals 2 works. Now when n equals 3, we have to do something a little bit more clever. So if we pick any z1 on the circle, we can make our calculations easier if we rotate everything such that z1 is at 1. And we can do that because this is basically the same thing as dividing all the roots by z1. The first condition is still satisfied because you're dividing by something of magnitude 1, which means that everything still stays with a magnitude of 1. And the second condition is still the same because you're dividing everything by a magnitude of z1 on both sides and you're dividing 0 by a magnitude of z1. So that means that if the complex number satisfied the equation before, it will still satisfy it after the rotation. And if it didn't satisfy before, it won't satisfy it after the rotation. So we can move z1 to be on the x-axis or z1 is equal to 1. Now what that allows us to do is because z1 is on the x-axis, we can exploit symmetry by considering the imaginary values. The imaginary values of z2 and z3 have to add up to 0 because z2 plus z3 is equal to negative 1. So that means that z2 and z3 have the same y-coordinate. Now let's look at their x-coordinates. If z2 and z3 had an x-coordinate anything other than negative 1 half, then the equation won't be satisfied because we want their x-coordinates to add up to negative 1. So that means that the only possible value, because z2 and z3 have to have the same x-coordinate, is when z2 and z3 are both at x equals negative 1 half. And we see that these points are also equally spaced on the unit circle. So n equals 3 also works. Now how about when n equals 4? Now n equals 4, we can easily verify that it actually doesn't work. And here's why. We can put z1 here on the x-axis, and we can put z2 here, and put z3 here, not on the y-axis, and z4 here on the opposite of z3. And this also satisfies the condition, but the points aren't equally spaced. They add up to 0 because they're diametrically opposite with each other, and they all have magnitude 1 because they're on the unit circle, but they're not equally spaced. So n equals 4 doesn't work. And for any n that's even, we can do a similar thing while keeping the points not equally spaced from each other. So any even n greater than or equal to 4 does not work. But what about the odd n? Now for n equals 5, what we can do is put z1 at the same place, z2 at the x-coordinate equals negative 1 half, and z3 at the x-coordinate equals negative 1 half, but on the negative side. Now what we can do is just keep adding points on the y-axis. So for z equals 5, this configuration could be possible. For z equals 7, we can have 4 roots on the y-axis, and so on. So for any odd n greater than or equal to 5, it doesn't work. So that means the only solutions are n equals 2 and n equals 3. So that means that there are two solutions. Looking at our answer choices, we see that 2 is in fact one of the answers, so we circle B and we're done. 